Ms. Aster. Present. Mr. Banks. Here. Mr. Jones. Present. Thank Will you. we all please stand for a pledge of allegiance followed by a moment of silence? Proclamation honoring Isabel Gravito, whereas women, Women's History Month provides an opportunity to honor the generations of amazing women and girls who have built our nation, shaped our progress, and strengthened our character as people. Whereas Mount Holly has been home to countless leaders and pioneers that have paved the way for future generations, Isabel Gravito is one such outstanding woman leader. And whereas this committed and dedicated athlete who began skating at the age of three and at the age of 14 has already competed at all levels in her career, winning at the juvenile, intermediate, novice, and junior levels here in the United States, as well as competing at the international level. And whereas last week, Isabel represented the United States at the World Junior Figure Skating Championship, bringing honor not only to herself her family and her community, but her entire country, receiving the most points overall and a gold medal. And whereas despite being too young to qualify for the Olympics, she took third overall at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships in January, competing against Olympians such as Maria Bell and Taryn Chen, where she achieved the highest technical score among all competitors. And whereas Isabel is an accomplished academic who speaks English, Italian, Russian, takes parts in honor classes, and is currently enrolled in 10th grade, which puts her one year ahead of her peers. And whereas in her free time, she loves to cook, read, play the piano, and loves to spend time with her family and cats watching movies and having sleepovers. <laughs> Therefore, in celebration of her achievements and dedication to the people of Mount Holly, and the greater community, the Mount Holly Township Council does here proclaim and declare that it is right and just that we honor Isabel Levito for these achievements, as she should be celebrated and honored, and furthermore, we encourage all citizens of Mount Holly to join us in this celebration. Mr. Brown? 
Graham, Mr. Codiani, yes. Ms. Astor, yes. Mr. Day, yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Next is Ordinance 2022-6, Ordinance amending Chapter 149, entitled Land Use Part 3, entitled Zoning to Create an AG Exclusively Overlay Residential District. Hmm. Any questions on this ordinance from Council? Um, I know the this ordinance and then the next two. Um, we, I think there was supposed to be like a broader explanation. We didn't get copies of them yet because they're not completely okay. finished. They're in another attorney's office. Okay. Um, Josh, do you want to? Um, I believe that Miss Fagley is supposed to. The first two are pretty much done. The third one just needs a planner's kind of explanation on the ordinance. Uh, she should have those by tomorrow. Um, with that, um, is there a motion to approve Ordinance 2022-6? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Uh, second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Yes. Ms. Astor? Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ordinance 2022-7, Ordinance Amending Chapter 149, entitled Land Use Part 3, entitled Zoning to Create a Mandatory Affordable Housing Set Aside to the Code of the Township of Mount Holly. Again, uh, up to Council. Yes. Motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Yes. Ms. Astor? Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. <coughs> Next is Ordinance 2022-8, an ordinance rescinding Ordinance 2019-11, entitled Ordinance Amending Chapter 149, entitled Land Use Part 3, entitled Zoning to Create the OB Inclusionary Overlay Residential District. Do I have a motion for this ordinance? <laughs> I have a first, do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Yes. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. All right. Move to matters be presented by the public. Members of the public are invited to submit comments during the public comment portion of this meeting. The council pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act will not discuss personnel matters and may choose not to respond to comments made by members of the public during this portion of the meeting. However, the council will give all comments appropriate consideration and will refer all individual complaints to the township manager or appropriate township representative for resolution. Each citizen will be allotted up to three minutes to speak in order to allow everyone an opportunity to express their opinions or concerns. We'll start with the first row. Uh, Mr. Stato, good evening. Good evening. Mr. Stato, 47 Garden Street. Uh, am I allowed to address the manager directly, or do I go to? You have to address council. Council, okay. Um, my understanding is we have a contract with a vendor to do the composting of leaves. I believe we do. And um, my understanding is also that the, the product that comes out of that, some portion of which should be supplied to residents, uh, and they usually dump it at the park, I think Mill Dam, right where the ramp is for, for, the, for the river. I haven't seen it. Uh, I did manage to speak to one um, member of Public Works and he said that it's difficulty to do and they haven't gotten around to it, but I, I don't know what the most recent um, news is on that, so that's what I'm asking about. Okay, um, well, I'll have to look into it because first, yeah, first time I've heard it. Yeah, so oh. I mean, not that it's been available, but that it hasn't been available yet. So Got first it. time I'm hearing of it, so I'm just all right. We, we will reach out and see what we can find out for you on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. How you doing, sir? Muy bien, great. <laughs> yes, I can speak other languages. Uh, my name is Luis Lopez. I live in 98 Drive, uh, 98 Lewis Drive. I have five questions on your agenda item. The first three agenda item, and uh, agenda item number J and M. No, no, yeah, J and M. Can you clarify for me? A, B, and C. Yeah. 
and J and M. J and M. Do you have questions on those? Yeah. All right, Josh, you want to start with uh, A, B, and C? They just reflect uh, work that's been done at the uh, West Grand Cocos location. Um, as work is completed, they get their bonds reduced. Uh, you said J? Yes. J is the approval of a demolition of the interior for 30 High Street. Um, the bids came back too high. That included the environmental and the demolition. So we're hoping by splitting them up that will kind of reduce the cost. And M is a contract between the township and its blue, white, and crossing guards for five years. I have two additional questions of my own. First is... Anywhere to make a uh, a uh, an add-on or an uh, agenda you could put on the next uh, township or uh, the next township meeting have having. I know you're gonna have to, like two weeks, you know, to come up uh, with a solution or or uh, funding. Uh, have a permanent tax abatement for the Mahali Gardens. When I say permanent, for you know, rest of the, you know, for our life. Not only me, except for the neighborhood and all the other people and people who taking care of the other people who reside in the garden. I would like to, I'll if you could pull it. to our attorney here, but I don't think we can have permanent tax abatements. I think the largest that you can have is a 30-year tax abatement. There is a way, uh, uh, there is a way that Ohio people did it for seven years ago. Cool. Well, there's an incident in Ohio with a tax abatement. It happened, it went through. They have, you know, talk to the train, everything. And I said, it can be done. I wonder if you are, at least have a talk or give me at least an answer or something for the next township, just to make a you know, life a little bit you know, better. And then we, uh, we build in more housing and stuff. You just worry about, you know, other people who have a fixed income. And I would appreciate if we could talk about it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not aware of any mechanism for the permanent tax payment, but I, I will speak with Mr. Coleman and, and have him report back to council. Okay. I have and. A question. Um. Well, actually, um, it is a, an extension a possibility, or is that all involved with the the overall? I think an extension of the uh, of the resident life. Would be a legal question for council that would have to be answered. If Been asking for a long time and I'm not knowledgeable enough. To and I, can I just ask you one more question, uh, Jason? Yeah, please. Can you tell me the definition of PAC? I, what do you refer? The definition of PAC. Okay, uh, there's PAC is a. Of, you know, funding PAC. Definitions of, for the word. Are you spelling it PAC? Or yeah, the definition, PAC? what does it stand for? In reference to what? To like a like a election or you know funding, that kind of a definition. I have to look it up. Just to, I don't know off the top of my head which, what it stands for. The words. I can take a guess, but I don't want to be wrong. Okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Anyone else in the first row? Seeing up, we'll go to the second row. Jenna Champion, First Avenue. I am actually, I guess, following up on details that I gave to the code enforcement about issues that are on Shreve Street. I don't usually read stuff, but I think this is important enough that I'm going to. Um, just bear with me. Okay. So for the past several years, We've seen changes to the uses at limited industrial strikes adjoining Shreve Street that are inappropriate to the environment. Triaxle dump trucks, tractor trailers, and industrial equipment are now constant feature that the single lane road was never physically capable of withstanding. Most of the homes from Clay to East Hampton are zone R1 with only two in R3. All the homes across from Renter deemed demolition are within 20 feet of the respective edge of the road. I've seen dump trucks and tractor trailers idling in front of these homes and heard screaming matches between homeowners and the truckers blocking their front door. Shreve at its widest is only about 18 feet just past Clay. From there, narrowing multiple times a single lane, with the narrowest part being a blind curve. 
Yet this road is active with youth racing cars, motorbikes, and off-road vehicles. Kids live on the street and have trucks as big as their homes, so heavy they can't make it up a slight incline, gunning it feet from their bedroom. The road is heavily traveled by pedestrians on foot and bicycle that would have no way to rationalize industrial vehicles being allowed on a single lane back road. Even the creek below is active year round with kayakers. As you were made aware of by code enforcement two weeks ago, these vehicles have accelerated the disintegration of a steep cliff between 227 and 237 Street. From the water below, it is noticeable that the dirt literally holding up the road is gone and it will continue to collapse into the heavy tonnage if not substantially reinforced. Code requires a four foot retaining wall of a guardrail and yet you have 30,000 pounds legally driving 69 inches from the edge of a 40 foot cliff straight down into water. Hmm. You could have a life taking disaster by turning a blind eye to property usage that was never allowed in the first place. The collapse of this cliff is capable of permanently stopping up the creek. The added water will <coughs> intensify flooding Mount Holly already gets and it will be a newsworthy environmental disaster. Water always finds a way and the next weakest point is liable to make my home inaccessible and negatively alter or diminish multiple fragile properties. All to get 18,000 a year in taxes from two properties on 15 acres. Less than what we homeowners pay and a lot less than what it's already gonna cost taxpayers to fix this error. There is no shoulder, no sidewalk, no guardrail anywhere on the road. More importantly, everything from these properties flows downhill and across the street directly into the creek. You issued a permit to a demolition company with zero forethought on containing their contaminants. You have multiple pipes channeling runoff from industrial sites into our drinking water. The heavy metals, asbestos, lead paint, and PCB chemicals indicative to the industry drain right into the Rancocas Creek every time it rains. Not only violating our town ordinance, but numerous DEP and EPA <coughs> regulations for the management of demolition industry. So allow me to be blunt. This road should have been made exit for truck traffic the day you learned about this weeks ago. So now you do better. Close it tomorrow, and after that, weigh the financial benefits of a demolition dump and a trailer junkyard to the town. But in the end, the road's gonna be gone to trucks one way or the other. So let me repeat, the cliff is in collapse. The road and whoever's on it will go with it. Not everything you break can be fixed, which is actually a lesson from Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> I do have pictures. I apologize, I didn't know how many to make, so. I'm going to have to share. So, pictures. Exhibit A. This is the width of the ground between the road and the 40 foot cliff. The fire hydrant is for reference point. Note there's no shoulder, sidewalk, or guardrails. Exhibit B is the cliff edge with cars reference. You know, the Red Cocos Creek below. C cliff edge with fire hydrant and concrete drainage pipe exit for referring. Note the washout at the base of the largest tree indicating a loss of land by a water overflow and the creek below. Pipes connect to storm drains across the street and collect runoff from Amcor and uphill from them. D is the top of a concrete drainage pipe with a delt nail for size reference. It has been actually. And E is the measurement of the ground between the road edge and the 40 foot drop. So, tell me when to stop. It's 69 inches. This is where I'm at. 69. That's all you have. 18 wheeler, four ton trucks, dump trucks. That's Dry what you're, axle dump that's dump what you're passing on that road before you go over a cliff. Yeah. Those four factors. That's 33 feet. The cliff is 40 feet. Yeah. Here's 33 feet. Give it a couple inches because you're like. Our so, tape measurement goes to 30 feet. <laughs> yeah. So we lasered it to, from the ground, the, the creek to the top of the hill is 40 foot straight cliff, straight down on that part of the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's my part. Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I just... Jenna. Jenna Champion. Three Birch. Okay, just take notes. Actually, at the back of it, you also have a copy of what I wrote 
And my name. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm joining Jenna, Claudia McNamara, 249 Shreve Street. Okay. So I live uh, across the street from a piece of land that divides, actually our land that divides Dean Demolition in that section from Shreve Street. I started this complaint because of the noise from Dean Demolition. The ordinance requires, it's ordinance 149-135, F requires that no sound should leave the site of a limited industrial use. There has been pounding, there have been truck noises, backing and filling. Um, I think Paul Hardiford did communicate with them and some of the noise has abated, but still 6.30 in the morning, five to six days a week, there's sound coming down to Shreve Street. This is particularly true now of the section between Paducah and the per and Cape's Tract. It was all the way through the area, but it goes down Cape's Tract. I can hear it. And you can hear it across the creek and fills on Cape's Tract. So that is a clear violation of that ordinance. And I have the, this is, a, we've kind of discovered all these things together, built on one another. But I, I, I believe that you all didn't know this, that you haven't been aware of these violations because I can't imagine that if you had been aware you would want to support it. So I don't know how these approvals were given to this to Dean Demolition, if they were given, or if it sort of grew and grew without anybody really noticing. But it's vital that these are addressed. Vital. And I think the pollution issue is also a big one. So there's noise pollution, chemical pollution, and danger. And our house is on a narrow curve a one flying curve, and our house was burnt down in 2003 completely because somebody missed that turn. Oh, oh. So, oh. and hit our house. So, and the gas main went and everything. She means so, blow up. Yeah. That, that sort of still brings my heart yeah. to my mouth. So, that's, that's the kind of issue we have on that little road. You cannot have two cars passing, a car has to pull over. If you've got a truck, okay. Claudia McNamara, 249 Shreve Street. Would you like my notes? Sure. Okay. Yes, please. Got my name and address on it. It doesn't have the voice phone. It doesn't have the passion. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Bill Bolger. I am a property owner at 28 Cape's Track, uh, within 100 yards of the question property. I've lived there for 15 years, and I have to say that for the first 10 or so, the limited industrial zoning was fine. The activity on that property was completely acceptable, and none of us had any complaints at all. But then in the past, I don't know quite when it started, because at first I thought it was a matter of them building a new building, but when it sounds like a building's being demolished every day, month after month, you begin to wonder what's going on. We were never notified, and I know that, for instance, some of these property owners uh, were within range where they should have been notified of any change. Mm -hmm. So this is something that simply occurred. Uh, I'm a property owner that has a wetland property downhill from this industrial site, and I get runoff in any rain event of, un of unknown material. I know that there's demolished construction debris being processed, loaded, unloaded, asphalt material, concrete block material. There could be asbestos, lead paint, any number of things could be in this processing area. And as far as I know, there's never been any review or any compliance at all. And when it rains, that water, that material comes off the hill and into my wetland and then into the creek. It's also a property that's adjacent to the uh, proposed trail, which I'd like to see completed, the, the Rancocas Trail, that at that point should be running along the rail line, which is adjacent to this property, and there be a great public amenity, something that I'm hoping the township will uh, pursue as soon as possible. I understand that the conditions that will allow that rail trail now are uh, reasonably achieved. So there are several recreational needs, um, residential issues. I wake up to noise almost every morning. 
and it is very noticeable. And the reason I moved here was the quiet and the beauty of that creek. And it has been severely disturbed to the point where I don't even invite guests. Not because I don't know what the conditions on any given day are going to be. And if I invite people for a picnic by the creek, they might be treated to something that's you know, highly unpleasant. So I really want to implore you to help us and to examine these issues and to, to enforce the compliance that we, we have a right to expect. which was instead of using code-based planning back in 2012, Mount Holly actually paid and had a study published on what they wanted the town to turn into. And the pictures are great. She can't read. She knows. But yet all we see are trucks. Thank you. I'm the same with them. Uh, Gary Pollock, uh, 3 Birch Avenue at Mount Holly. I got this right off the Mount Holly webpage of the trucks that exceed four tons of gross weight. And we've seen in town, we ride our bikes in town, we're all over, and all it is is tractor trailers, big dump trucks going this way, up through past her school. And on these ordinance that you guys have off your website, there's street names of different locations and there's zero sign posted of no trucks. We just saw the one today that over here they just posted an electronic sign where it said, you know, four tons, you, you see a violation the whole nine yards. But I think having more of these signs around town where tractor trailers and triacs and dump trucks don't have the accessibility to run through town like we're sitting in front of the pizza place or some of these other places and just the rumbling is just, it's very disturbing. So it also becomes a safety factor too. So. That's, that was my point. It's just more signage with the new trucks in town would be great. Thank you. Anyone else in that rally? Just one last Okay, all right. Stop. This time. <laughs> uh, the next round. <clears throat> Third row. Holly Doyle, 11 Washington Street. Um, ironically, I came with a similar complaint, but not related, but um, I'm concerned about the tractor trailer that came through downtown, came from Mill Street and tried to turn on the High Street and took out the brand new brick curbing we have and the yeah. post that's supposed to keep them, but it doesn't. Um, it did considerable damage and it's right next to the fountain, which is part of Mount Holly's history. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Historical Society is gonna ask questions about it um, when we have our meeting tomorrow night. And I just wanna know, is the township going after this truck that did the damage to our downtown area? Yes, yeah, so our insurance company is going after the big truck. For sure, so. Okay, thank you. But I also want, uh, you know, I also wanna, you know, reiterate what they have said. We need to be more proactive and tell these trucks that they are not welcome to come barreling through our downtown. The walls of my building shake. I mean, I have to go around and refix all my pictures because that's how bad they shake the buildings. So we just spent all this money fixing the undercarriage of our roads and only to let them get damaged again. And I just want, I want us to be more proactive in, you know, get these trucks out of town. This is a downtown area. It's not a freeway for them to come barreling through. They don't reduce speed. They're not following the speed limit and they're shaking the whole downtown. So I really want to implore council to find ways to, um, uh, what do you call that? Um, we have the laws in place, enforced. but they're not being enforced. reinforced. They're not being enforced. They actually did so. fix it. They built a bypass. It's called the Mount Holly Bypass. Oh, yeah. So they try to bypass Mount Holly. But they missed the bypass. I mean, I see this all the time. They missed the bypass 
and that brings them right downtown, and then they get stuck at the intersection between High, White, Washington, and Mill Street. They get stuck there. And, you know, crossing guards are trying to help them get through the intersection. And, and that's a school crossing area. And it's just really, really dangerous. And, and it happens 24 hours a day. This isn't just during the day. They're coming through at night. So we need better signage or something to alert these truckers that they're not welcome in our downtown. And we've provided ways around it. Um, so that's what I had to say. Betty Jean Kessler, 418 Langstaff Avenue, Mount Holly, New Jersey. I have a couple questions regarding resident permit parking visitors passes. Um, I checked with the police department regarding the rules and regulations. And if you look at the first paragraph, everybody will get a copy. There is no rules and regulations. The paragraph that they have here is vague and non-descriptive. Question number one, do service providers such as PSE&G, Verizon, et cetera, do they have to have a visitor's pass on their vehicle when they are providing services to a particular home? That's question one. Number two, does military personnel renting a property allowed to keep vehicles of their friends or colleagues who are TDY on resident permit parking streets or non-resident par parking streets because their, par their friends are parking their vehicles here while their colleagues are TDY instead of leaving them in the base storage. Resident permit parking visitors passes are residents allowed to loan, give, or sell their passes to non-resident permit parking neighbors. Um, what are the rules and regulations regarding resident permit parking passes? Because the rules and regulations according to Manhattan Police Department are basically non-existent. Last but not least, has or does anyone plan on apologizing to May Holly Volunteer Main Street Group for the previous situation that I find is still unresolved at this time. I have copies of the visitor's passes, what they look like. I have copies for everybody of the police department's rules and regulations, which is non-existent. And I am requesting that we need to have some kind of clarification regarding the rules and regulations on resident permit parking passes and what the, what the what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do with these passes. Okay, so here's everybody's copies, the questions, the police department, ordinance, and what the passes look like. Thank you, have a nice evening. Thank you. Uh, anyone else in that room? Hello, um, Kim Burkus, 29 Hillside Road. Um, just one quick thing for today. Um, would love to get some clarity on the ordinances that had their first reading today. I was un I'm under the impression that the purpose of the first reading is to get an understanding of what that ordinance is all about, ask questions, um, so that everybody, question. that they can all be, everything can be clarified and you all can have a really good sense of what they are for the actual second reading and then vote. So I'm not sure if you have more information about what they are than we know now in this room, and if so, can you share what they are? Um, and then sort of be, am I mistaken in what the purpose of a first reading is if it literally isn't here to read? Um, that's it for me. Thanks. Rothbell, 33 Union Street. If I can be more specific, um, on Ordinance 2022-6, um, what area of the township does it cover? <coughs> In the 
December, the council approved the settlement agreement for fair share housing and the court administrator for uh, basically our included care zoning. Um, it was at the hospital, but since the hospital is on staff, we had to negotiate a deal with fair share housing in order to find locations. We supplied a couple of locations to fair share housing, and they came back with uh, a few locations that they decided that they wanted to have for property tax. And is that what the one is in what are those locations? Uh, one is off Holman Street, one is off Church Street, one is off Pine Street, and one is off of uh, Branch Street. Branch Street? Yes. And what is an AG inclusionary overlay? It's a set aside of 20% affordable housing at the location. That's what AG is? I believe so. And what is, um, in, the, in Ordinance D, 2022-8, what is an OB inclusionary overlay? The OB was the hospital zone. Okay, so basically you're changing it from the hospital, which is now staying, Correct. and you're moving it to these other four areas, and that's the purpose of the ordinance, that's the purpose yes. of allowing affordable housing exactly. in the township. And then um, is that what CC also address the affordable housing set aside? Sure. And what's the, what's the, so are these new homes that are gonna be built in the area, or are these homes that already exist? There's plenty more new, new, new construction. New construction? And how many percent, what percentage is gonna be affordable housing? 20%. 20%? <coughs> <laughs> Anyone else in that room? <coughs> Jimmy, you're on the floor of the floor sheet for tonight. Uh, I'm back up to the capital for the set agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by council and will be attached by one motion. Should a council member wish to discuss the set agenda item separately, <coughs> can be removed from the set agenda and considered in normal sequence. Under the set agenda, we have resolution number 2243, resolution authorizing the junction of some guarantee for property known as West Branco to the Cruz Project, Levis Drive. Resolution number 2022-44, resolution authorizing the reduction of performance guarantee for property known as West Branco to the Development Project, Boundary Boulevard. Resolution number 2022-45, resolution authorizing the reduction of performance guarantee for property now as West Ranco Street Development Project Stormwater Facilities in Founder Boulevard and Levis Drive. Resolution 2022-46, resolution authorizing and approving a collective bargaining agreement with the Association of Mount Holly Township Police Department and Police. Resolution 2022-47, resolution authorizing and designating handicapped parking space Space at 39 Brainers. Resolution number 2022-48, resolution authorizing the refund or cancellation of property taxes to 211 Woodpecker Lane. Resolution number 2022-49, resolution authorizing the distribution of the estimated tax bill for the third quarter of the year 2022. Resolution number 2022-50, a resolution approving a contract with C, G, P, and H for general administration and case management services for the 2021 Small City C, D, D, G housing rehabilitation grant. Resolution number 2022-51, a resolution authorizing an award of contract for Woman Lake Dam Repair Project. Resolution number 2022-52, resolution approving a quote per proposal from store construction group in connection with partial demolition of an improved structure at 30 High Street. Resolution number 2022-53, a resolution authorizing tax refunds and or application of credits for duplicate payments and tax refunds with interest for credits resulting from county tax board judgment for the year of 2022. Resolution 2022-54, resolution establishing Mount Holly as a stigma-free zone for mental health awareness. Resolution number 2022-55, resolution authorizing the execution of a contract between the Township of Mount Holly and Communication Workers of America, AFL-CIO, and Local 1036 for the period of January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2026. Resolution number 2022-56, Resolution awarding, authorizing award of contract for grant writing services. Resolution number 2022-58. Resolution referring ordinance 2022-6, 2022-7, and 2022-8 to the planning board. 
Resolution number 2022-59, a resolution authorizing a shared service agreement with the Board of Education, Rancho Kiss Valley High School, and the County of Burlington for a pedestrian signal on Jacksonville Road and RV High School Gymnasium. The approval of the bill list and the department head report for the month of March. With the consent agenda, does anyone on council wish to have anything pulled and voted on separately? Yes. Okay, please state which ones you would like to have pulled. Okay. Um, resolution number 2022 42, 44, 45. 42. Yes. <clears throat> Should we ask the questions now and try to get it back on the consent agenda? Well, I, I mean, these are that way. Yeah, 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 I just, um, I wasn't like completely understanding 43, 44, 45 and cramming today, trying to read everything and understand. If you could just in more detail explain um, what the reduction of performance error to your property for each one of those, like, what does that mean, and what does that mean, like, financially? I, I know this is the email, it's not something you're going to be able to read right away. Okay. This is from our township engineer who goes out and recommends these things. So that's where we get those resolutions from. I get a letter from the engineer saying he has inspected what has been done to date, and then recommends a reduction in the, in the bond because the work has been completed as it was supposed to. So they can decrease their bond amount because the work is aggressive and it's getting done. So, so it's a decrease of It should be a PA system. Mm -hmm. what we're getting from them or what they're getting from them. No, it's a performance bond. So all that does is guarantee the work. So there's no actual money exchange that says it's actually a piece of paper okay. that says they're going to put up this much money basically guaranteeing the performance of the work and that the work will get completed. Okay, thank you. And then the 58, there wasn't a question. I just felt uncomfortable voting on it because it was a reference to the ordinances in the beginning, which I haven't read the full explanation okay. since that's it. Mm -hmm. so. We can okay. pull that and vote on that separately okay. so we can just say that. Are we good with adding the, uh, the first three back in? Yes, I'm fine okay. with that. Um, anyone else on the council have any questions on the consent agenda? All right, so under the consent agenda, we will have every resolution from 43 to 56, and then 59, the bill list and the department help head under one vote, and then we'll vote on ordinance 20, 20 through 58 separately. Mm -hmm. So we'll first, the motion is for the consent agenda. Do I have I have a first by Mr. Brown. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Cody, I have a second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cody, Yes. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Next, uh, we have to vote on resolution number 2022-58. Um, we have a motion to approve resolution 2022-58. Motion to approve. I have a first. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Miss Astor? Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next, we have resolution for consideration by council. Resolution number 2022-57. A resolution introducing and approving first reading of the 2022 budget authorizing publication of the budget and providing for public hearing on May 23rd. 2022 at 6 p.m. in council chambers. Do we have a motion to approve this resolution? Motion. I have a first. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Yes. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Uh, matter be reported by the township manager? None, sir. Uh, matter be reported by us or sir? Thank you for showing up tonight, right. last minute notice. Thank you. Did Tom our best. We'll do that. Yeah. 
Let's hope that he gets better. Uh, matters to be presented by council. Mr. Cody Young. Yes, uh, first I'd like to congratulate once again uh, Ms. Lobito on the back. Uh, all, all you accomplished is wonderful, especially at your age, and it's great to have such an outstanding representative for our town. Um, and I know there's a couple, uh, a number of comments on trucks and parking in the town. Uh, we are a very old town and it wasn't obviously developed for cars and trucks and things like that. I know I've gone up and down street street plenty of times and it is very narrow um, there and there's a bit of a, a drop off. Um, and I know in my own neighborhood over Brainerd Street, I see trucks trying to make a turn on that street all the time and uh, they usually end up getting the telephone pole or the uh, fire hydrant. So um, I think it would be good for us to kind of consider uh, the different streets in Heaven Town and ordinances we have. I know there's a lot of different areas that are issues, but kind of taking a look at some creative ideas on how to manage it all. That's it. What's your name again, sir? Uh, Jim Curian. Jim, okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tara Oster, in case anyone of you that didn't know. Um, thank you all from Free Street. Street. Um, I think this is a lot to take into consideration, and you know, I lived in other places that had like you know big no truck signs and all that stuff. So I'm actually gonna go down Shreve Street, Street and, and take a look for myself. And um, like I assume Jim, you know, we, we should talk about it and see what we, we could do. Um, and um, Isabel, uh, congratulations. I've been sort of following your career. And Al Guri, I uh, happen to speak Italian. <laughs> um, it, it's wonderful to see all the success and that you are from Mount Holly, I'm so proud. Um, and thirdly, um, just sort of the, the main reason that I um, abstain from voting on certain ordinances is because, you know, I, I'm lucky that I work from home on Mondays so that I can read and absorb and ask questions if needed. But every vote, no matter how minimal or something as simple as a parking sign, um, it's, it's important and it's, you know, public record and we create policy and local and I need to know what I'm voting on. And I'd love to have more time to really read everything before I make a vote that is my public record. Um, that's it, thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown, you go. Mr. Banks. Yeah, I'd like to thank the young lady, Isabel, um, for all your accomplishments. Uh, and especially at a very young age, did you see my fellow colleagues up here too as well. Very proud of you, represent my Holly, and wish you the best and successful career moving forward. Um, as for the trucks, yeah, they're a concern. Uh, there's a lot of things happening with the surrounding towns as well, with, which increases our traffic too as well. So that's something that we need to address at some point with the county, because the majority of our main roads are county roads. So that's something that we have to look into. Um, and we, you know, we hear your concerns, and I'm glad people came by and let us know some of these issues as well. Um, so we'll look into it. and. Like I said, we'll try to find some type of resolution. Uh, yeah, thank you guys all for coming out. One second, and I'll give you a chance to speak, but we have to, your public comment was earlier, and then we'll let you finish at the end after we finish the meeting. Okay, okay? thank you. Um, to reiterate with my uh, colleagues up here, congratulations on all your hard, hard work, young lady. I see a bright future for you. Um, keep your head down, keep moving forward. You seem to be on the right road as it is now, and the township uh, really likes that you represent us. You've done a great job so far, thank you. Uh, with that, uh, as far as the trucks, we will look into all of the situations and work with the county on what we can try to accomplish. Um, with that, our next meeting would be Monday, May 23rd at uh, 6 p.m. So, um, with that, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, thank you. Now, ma'am, you may address one last time. You don't have to give your name or anything anymore. Yeah, you know who I am. I brought the pictures on the tablet. Because okay. It's not necessary to you're posting them with it. And the way that you can easily access it is actually from our property. 
that's how we got pictures from the road. <coughs> so we did offer it to the code enforcer two weeks ago to come down and see it from our vantage point, but anybody that wants to come and see how bad this actually is, it's this was actually taken, so between the meeting that was canceled and this one, there were a convoy, three triaxle dump trucks with a full-size trailer with full-size demolition <coughs> equipment that went back to back. So about 90,000 pounds each time. And the about 20 foot section of the road, underneath the road collapsed because of that. You can't have to scroll too far. All you're gonna get is my daughter's feet. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Make sure you have your <laughs> There's like 900 pictures on there if you don't want to know. <laughs> We appreciate the uh, invitation, and I'm sure some of you probably will be reaching out to uh, to look into it. All <coughs> thank you. All right. Good evening, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs>